definitely one of those weekends that I feel like you will remember for the rest of your life. You know, there are certain moments throughout one's life, uh, throughout history, kind of those where were you moments, right? Where were you? I remember one of them being where were you when 9-11 occurred? And I still remember precisely what I was doing when I found out the news of the Twin Towers being struck by terrorist planes. Another one occurred this weekend. Where were you when the assassination attempt happened on former President Donald Trump? Uh, And I can tell you where I was. I was upstate New York getting ready to celebrate my birthday. Uh, And it has been such a wild range of of emotions since all of this news occurred, since this tragic is one way to describe it, uh, not because of its necessarily its outcome, but because of the events that occurred in order for this to take place. Um, The assault on Donald Trump has been happening for, I mean, at this point, years. Um, But this was just this was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I believe a straw that ultimately will help to give Donald Trump uh, the presidency, uh, and that will be set in stone. Uh, but yeah, truly a, a wild range of emotions. Uh, people are obviously feeling outraged. People are feeling sad. Uh, the state of this country, I don't think has ever been more clear. Uh, and I also think that the reaction as to what has come out of this whole incident of the assassination attempt on Donald Trump in Pennsylvania over the weekend at a rally, uh, really is showing us a lot about where people stand on different issues. Uh, first and foremost, uh, this photo you're seeing on your screen right here, this photo will go down as one of the greatest photos ever taken in history. I mean, this will be in the history books for my children to see, for my grandchildren to see, for my great grandchildren to see. I mean, this is a photo. I'm actually unaware of the photographer who's responsible for some of these photos that are going absolutely viral, but wow, tremendous job, uh, massive talent in the photography department, and uh, really just goes to show what kind of a leader Donald Trump really is. He almost had his, you know, head shot off. I mean, you could see this, the bullet uh, that was ultimately shot by that 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, a local guy uh, whose Secret Service somehow did not track down in the minutes leading up to this assassination attack, despite people in the crowd seeing this guy on top of a building that was 150 some yards away from President Trump. Uh, he had a ladder that he got into the supposedly secured off perimeters. I mean, clearly Secret Service did not do their job. But getting back to Donald Trump, I mean, the fact that he was able to turn his head just so, so that the bullet did not enter into his head, but rather just clipped his ear is something that we all should be celebrating. I think we have a graphic of that uh, showing, yeah, right here. If Trump hadn't moved his head, the bullet would have likely hit the rear of his head, ending his life. We would be telling a whole different story this morning. Uh, it wouldn't be one talking about how crazy this was, but rather we would be full of tremendous grief this morning, probably in the midst of Donald Trump's closest family members planning his funeral. Uh, but you can see right here, if the bullet would have hit where it was supposed to go, it would have entered into the rear of his brain. Because he turned his head just so, it clipped the corner of his ear. Thank God. Honestly, all I have to say about this is thank God. Uh, and a lot of people are saying the same thing. But obviously, I talk about this range of emotions that we've all been feeling. I only think it took but a couple of minutes after this event occurred for people to really wake up. A lot of people, I think, had already maybe endorsed Trump in their mind, Uh, but maybe weren't comfortable enough coming right out and saying it, because obviously, as we know, we constantly talk about it on this show that conservative beliefs and values can't really be aired so publicly because you're ultimately in in the state of what we're in in this country condemned for having those beliefs. But but not anymore. The amount of people that I have come I have seen come out and air their beliefs as to how they actually feel about Donald Trump, how they feel about the right versus left controversy we're seeing going on in this country, and and how they exactly feel as far as their comfort level of endorsing Donald Trump. 
All bets are off at this point. Uh, let's just take a look at some of the greatest endorsements that we saw come down immediately following this assassination attempt. First and foremost, Elon Musk, owner of X. I mean, the reach that this man has, the number of impressions that he had on his endorsement saying, quote, I fully endorse President Trump and hope for his rapid recovery. This tweet went viral immediately. I know for one, I reposted this minutes after this assassination attempt occurred. There's one. Another one coming from Roger Clemens. Speechless right now. Couldn't be more man. I stand for this man. This picture says it all. The angry American is here and y'all aren't ready for it. An angry American is a perfect way to describe how so many people in this country are feeling. Another one coming from Jake Paul. If it isn't apparent enough who God wants to win, when you try and kill God's angels and saviors of the world, it just makes them bigger. Good beats evil every time. Then we have Conor McGregor, a 78-year-old millionaire billionaire. He should be on a yacht and on the med touring golf courses, but he is not. He's in Pennsylvania spitting out bullets, running for the love of his country. Godspeed, Donald. God bless the United States. Uh, and it should be a reminder to all of you, Conor McGregor is not even an American. He's from Ireland, and he still says, God bless America. He is still far more American and patriotic than so many people in this country. And we'll get to that in just a second. But in the aftermath of the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, our soon-to-be next president, now I will say for certain, I believe with that bullet, Almost hitting him, he just won all 50 states. He has raised so much money for his campaign. Uh, the Trump campaign sanctioned at GoFundMe. Um, they had a GoFundMe started for the victims of the shooting yesterday. They have raised nearly $3 million so far as well. Uh, because let's also not forget to mention that because there was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump, because that idiot kid, the 20-year-old from Pennsylvania, tried to kill Donald Trump, there were also other victims. One has already passed away. That's this gentleman in front of you, a father. Um, he lost his life as a result of these bullets. And there were two others that were critically injured. And uh, as far as whether or not they will ultimately make it, I sure hope so. Uh, but the fact is someone lost their life as a result of this. Two others critically injured. Donald Trump, thank goodness, managed to turn his head just in time to dodge that bullet. But again, we would be talking about something completely different this morning. We would probably be in the midst of a civil war this morning had Donald Trump actually been struck and killed by that bullet. Um, but Donald Trump, like I said, raised a tremendous amount of money for his campaign. The GoFundMe for the victims raising a tremendous amount of money. But the story that still needs to be told, because I feel like anyone who has a grasp of what's right and wrong in this world is going to stand on the side of good this morning. It's not about whether or not you are conservative, whether or not you are a liberal, whether you're right, whether you're left. This is about good versus evil, right versus wrong. And I think that's very clear. This isn't about what you stand for politically. This is the fact that we just had an assassination attempt on one of the presidential nominees. That's horrible. Uh, the, the state of our country, the fact that this could happen, the fact that all of the incidents occurred to lead up to this point, the fact that an assassination attempt was predicted on Donald Trump months ago, the fact that the Democrats tried to take away Donald Trump's Secret Service protection in the past, not so long ago, also says a lot. The fact that Joe Biden just said verbatim in 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 some type that Donald Trump has a bullseye on him uh saying that literally just in the past couple of weeks doesn't bode well for the Democrats and people are finally seeing through to all of this and now in the wake of this assassination attempt you would think that mainstream media would have enough sense to cover this fairly and justly right i mean that's the whole purpose of the media is to be truth seekers i think we have now seen for certain that the leftist media, the mainstream media, is anything but that. We have some headlines that we can show you this morning uh, that immediately followed what happened to former President Donald Trump. Um, I know I've been keeping tabs on a lot of them, but here's one. 
Uh, this one came from Forbes. Will surviving gunfire be Donald Trump's next? Well, this is actually... This is a positive one. I'd like to show some of the negative ones that we have so far. Um, I know that here. Okay, we have gunman dies in attack. Clearly, uh, not even talking about Donald Trump here. We're talking about the gunman dies in attack, uh, trying to take the focus off of our future presidents, nearly getting killed, nearly getting gunned down. Uh, but some of the ones that struck me the most is Newsweek, for example, immediately following. MAGA responds with outrage after Donald Trump injured at Pennsylvania rally, injured at Pennsylvania rally. Uh, I, don't, I don't think injured is exactly what occurred here. I think there was an attempt to gun him down to kill him. Uh, another one from the Washington Post. Trump escorted away after loud noises at Pennsylvania rally. Sounds like they're trying to tell a much different story than what actually occurred. Another one, CNN. Trump injured at incident at Pennsylvania rally. Again, telling a much different story. Another one from CNN. Trump speech interrupted by Secret Service. Interrupted by Secret Service? I'm not sure that's exactly what happened either. Here's one from ABC News. Trump rushed off stage during disturbance at Pennsylvania rally. Disturbance? Bullets? Nearly killing the president? The former president is, is what we're describing as a disturbance? Here's another one. Trump removed from stage by Secret Service after loud noises startles former president, comma, crowd. I mean, that's from CNN as well. And we didn't need any more evidence that CNN was completely off their rockers. I mean, they're, 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 they're feeding all of the lies into this country as we know it, but this is just taking it to a whole nother level. Trump removed from stage by Secret Service after loud noises startled him in the crowd. I mean, this just goes to show you cannot believe a word that the mainstream media says. Uh, I've even had to send some of these headlines to some of my family members who have been posting some egregious things over the weekend, and I had to put them in their place. And I think once I was able to kind of talk them through what exactly occurred, uh, maybe they came to their senses a little bit too. But it's disgusting. It's callous. It's despicable. And I think that anybody who shares in reading these headlines, who shares in, in spreading these headlines, uh, has zero empathy for what occurred. Uh, and they really need to start waking up because what we're experiencing now in this country, what we experience an, a, a near assassination on what now will be our future president on a former president should never have happened. And again, I will repeat, if this would have gone in a different direction, if Trump would not have turned his head ever so slightly, we very well could be in the midst of civil war this morning. Um, so I hope this is a wake up call to everybody. Uh, I am very confident Trump just captured a large portion of the vote that he would not have had otherwise. Uh, we already talked about some of the endorsements. Even Bill Ackman decided to go forward and publicly endorse him over the weekend. And that's someone that I don't think any of us expected to publicly endorse Donald Trump just after uh, several weeks ago saying that that's something he would never do. But a lot of people are seeing you, you can't trust the Democrats. Clearly, Secret Service did not do their job. And if they had done their job, this would have never happened. Again, this crazy person snuck a ladder, not even snuck. He had a massive ladder. He somehow got it into the perimeter, climbed up on top of the building. People were aware. They saw him crawling around for minutes, pointing him out. Secret Service had a sniper ready to go. How was this guy not taken down moments before? It only happened after the bullets started spraying. It's just disgusting. Uh, I have so many more thoughts on it, but um, let's bring in someone else to the conversation because I think this is a conversation a lot of us are going to be getting into for not just days, not just weeks, not just months, but this is going to go all the way to November and beyond uh, when we finally introduce Donald Trump as the 47th president of the United States. So on that note, let's go ahead and bring in Amber Harding. She's an outkick contributor. She comes on every week. You all know her. You all love her. And Amber, I just cannot believe what we experienced this weekend. I open the show with this is one of those moments that will ever be remembered as a where were you when type of thing. So Amber, where were you when there was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump? I was in my living room. 
Um, and I had actually just got done working and crazy. I was down there with a friend and I was, I was watching 90 day fiance as I, as I tend to do Charlie. Um, yep. and my husband came running down the stairs. He said, someone, someone tried to kill Trump. And I was just like, I was floored. I was what we turned on the news and we were glued. We were glued to the news all weekend. Just absolutely could not believe that, that that had happened and that we were witnessing this in real time. Yeah, it was so scary and it was immediate. I mean, that's the thing about having access to all types of social media. Now, the Internet obviously is able to spread information so much faster than, you know, for example, 9-11. Um, I was in seventh grade when 9-11 occurred and, you know, we didn't have access to the computers and the Internet. Like it was all very like what's happening. And it took so long to really get all of the information and to make sense of the information. But we had all of it at our fingertips within moments of this happening yesterday. And just to see the reaction, how people were responding to an attempted gutting down of a former president while he was at a rally, to see this photo come out of him, you know, noticing that he got hot, got hit, feeling it, seeing the blood going down immediately, but then Having the sense of leadership to, to want everyone to know that he's okay, to come up and say, fight, 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 which of course we know CNN has already pushed back against saying that was the improper response. That's not the narrative that we should be pushing at this point in time, which is absolutely insane. Um, we had access to all of this information so suddenly and just to see how people have responded to it. Amber, I have no doubt in my mind that if Trump already wasn't going to capture a sensational lead that people weren't already uh, going to be voting for him in droves like they were, that he wasn't already capturing certain voting bases that he wasn't necessarily expecting based on the last election. I think we have all of that evidence now. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen people that, like you said, never you never would have thought that they would come out and publicly endorse Trump. And they're doing that now. I think that this really I hate that it had to happen this way. It didn't have to happen this way, but it. it it really removed the stigma that existed where people before, you know, especially back in 2016 and then even in 2020, where people were afraid to admit, I'm, I, you know, that you're a Trump supporter. And I, that's, that's all out the window now. That's part of the reason some of those headlines that you showed that the media were so afraid to use the words assassination attempt because they didn't want to drum up any sympathy for Trump whatsoever. But since then, you know, leftists have been tying themselves in knots trying to figure out how to spin this. Like, do we blame MAGA? Do we blame guns? Do we blame Trump himself? There have been people who have blamed Trump himself for someone else trying to kill him. So they've anything to take away this responsibility from themselves for the dangerous rhetoric they've been spewing for years, you know, saying he's some sort of evil dictator. He's literally Hitler. He's going to do all these terrible things, take women's rights away, put people in concentration camps, just absolutely ridiculous things. The democracy is going to crumble as we know it. And then now someone actually tried to take his life and they're all backpedaling, right? We see all these politicians saying things like, oh, we're so glad Trump is okay. We're praying for him. This is so awful, but you can't have it both ways. You can't say all these horrible things about him that he's literally Hitler and then say, oh, well, we're praying for him. We're so glad he's OK. You wouldn't talk that way about Hitler. So they can't they can't commit to that narrative. Right. Because they know it's they know it's ridiculous. And so Donald Trump almost lost his life over this. And an innocent man did lose his life. So it's just really shameful behavior coming from coming from that side. Yeah, and I think that when you talk about the mainstream media is twisting themselves into knots, which we got into, I read so many different headlines, which paint a very different picture than what actually occurred. I mean, startled, Secret Service rushes Trump off stage after, you know, he's startled by disturbance. I mean, I... It, I just don't have any words for them, but you're right. They are trying to find whatever excuse that they can for why this happened, not because, you know, we have we have a certain, you know, members of the media who have, you know, twisted lies up to this point that have brainwashed people into thinking that Donald Trump is some, you know, crazy dictator who's going to, you know, in turn crumble democracy if he should be getting into office again. So now you have the ma the mainstream media trying to figure out what they can do to, to fix what has happened. Uh, ABC, one of many, now blaming Trump explicitly for what happened. Watch this. Also, George, we have to point out 
no matter who the shooter, what the shooter's motives were, no matter who the shooter is, you are going to hear conspiracy theories going forward. No, no question about that. But as, as you, you point out those statements from J.D. Vance and Vivek Ramaswamy, of course, uh, President Trump and his supporters have, have contributed to this violent rhetoric as well. Well, absolutely, George. We were just looking back this morning at some of the things that uh, former President Trump has said. He warned last March of potential death and destruction if he were charged by the Manhattan District Attorney. Our country is being destroyed, as they tell us, to be peaceful. Uh, Trump in January warned of bedlam in the country if the criminal charges against him succeeded. And of course, in March, he said, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That will be the least of it. He said he was partly joking and that that was taken out of context. Uh, but those are indeed his words. And you have heard it from supporters as well. And supporters are certainly in some parts angry. And, and uh, yeah, so uh, according to ABC, Trump this is all his doing, right? Like he, because he said these same, you know, this, this all leads and, and points to the fact that he hired the hitman to go up on the roof to, you know, try and murder him. Uh, yes, absolutely. That makes total sense. I mean, these people, unfortunately, I mean, they, I don't know if they believe it themselves, um, but they're lunatics and it's actually really, it's, it's just pure evil at this point, uh, that a man nearly lost his life a former president, and and they have nothing better to do but to spread more lies. Yeah, victim blaming in an assassination attempt is is really that's <laughs> that's really something. It's but wild. it's also to what you were talking about these conspiracies that these people have come up with. There are there are people out there who believe this was staged that somehow staged. Trump set all of this up to to bolster his support. And that is not only absolutely ludicrous, but it's also really insulting to the family of the man who passed away and to the the people who were critically injured and are still being treated in the hospital right now to even suggest that he would do something like that. And the same people who are drumming up those sort of conspiracies are the people who called us crazy for saying like, maybe we didn't need to shut down the entire country for two years over COVID or maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. The people who hate the conspiracy theory so much have come up with the most wild conspiracy theory I've, I've probably ever heard. Yeah, um, I think that a lot of people, like I said, I think their eyes have been opened uh, in the wake of everything that has occurred. I think that people that doubted Donald Trump's ability to lead, uh, his strength, uh, whether or not he's good for this country, I think now this morning have woken up with a completely different outlook. And I truly do believe when that gun fired, when that bullet struck Donald Trump's ear, thank goodness he turned his head just clipped him. But I do believe once we saw the blood on his face, once all of these events unfolded, uh, I believe that it became official that Trump is going to be our next president. And I think a lot of people who were not comfortable talking about Donald Trump and how they supported him or maybe how they were considering supporting him or maybe how they were unhappy with the state of our country, uh, how the Democrats are running our country. Now people have the confidence to start speaking up. And that is all I have seen all over the internet, besides a few people who still seem to be brainwashed by the Democrats. Uh, but I think, I think it's going to be a, a slow roll for those people. And I think ultimately their eyes hopefully might be opened as well. So like you said, Amber, not something we ever wanted to happen, but maybe truly, ultimately, this is a blessing in disguise. And uh, that photo of Donald Trump, uh, I know I'm probably one of many who who now feel like I should go out, get a copy of that and put it up on my living room wall. Uh, it is truly iconic. And I think that this is going to be an image that will speak volumes for the rest of time. Um, OK, Amber, I would love to keep talking about this because I feel like there's so many different angles to get into. But I also think it's important to, to talk about some of the positive stuff that happened over the weekend, uh, maybe uplift our spirits just a little bit. Uh, obviously, we have been focusing on Caitlin Clark now since she made her debut in the WNBA. Uh, she got a little bit feisty over the weekend. 
We're not mad at it. We, we like Caitlin Clark to be able to show her emotions just as much as every other WNBA seems to show their emotions, uh, you know, when it comes to Caitlin Clark. Uh, Caitlin Clark got a technical foul over the weekend. She took a swipe at a Minnesota defender during the game. But after the game, in her usual form, she stayed very classy. She actually gifted a pair of her sneakers to a younger fan, and it was a really nice moment. Let's watch. <laughs> Okay, well, very short, very short clip. Um, but it was nice, you know. It's nice to see Caitlin Clark. She's able to, to feel a certain way, you know, get a little bit worked up, but then able to push those aside and do something really nice for a young fan because, you know, most of the fans in the audience are there for Caitlin Clark. And I'm sure she just made not only that kid's night, but also probably their year as well. Yeah, we, we definitely saw some frustration from Caitlin yesterday, some feistiness, as you said. Um, you know, heading into yesterday's game, she has been on an absolute tear. She had five straight double-doubles. Right before that, she became the first WNBA rookie to have a triple-double. So she's been playing some really great basketball, but Minnesota somehow found a way to contain her yesterday. And she was having a pretty pretty rough first half. She just wasn't able to get get some shots off. She wasn't, she wasn't hitting the ones she was getting off. And, um, she got a little frustrated, you know, Alana Smith reached for her arm and Caitlin kind of swiped back at, at Alana's face. Um, Caitlin got the technical, it was the right call. It was, it should have been a tech. Um, and she, she kind of in the second half, she kind of, she kind of picked things up. Her teammates were able to, to pick up some slack and the fever got the win and look, they're playing really good basketball right now. They've won eight of 12, certainly a huge turnaround from how we saw them start the season. Um, so that was a, good for Caitlin. Good for that fan. That's, that's, that's really exciting. It's great for Indiana. And, uh, I think, uh, I, not that Caitlin needed any more, uh, needed to do anything else to get people to support her because I know Indiana loves her, but just seeing stuff like that is always, I always love a good feel good story like that. Yeah, for sure. And I know right now, like, people are already starting to chime in on potential rookie of the year in the WNBA. I think right now, Angel Reese, as far as stats are concerned, she's got, um, you know, the best stats on the sheet. So, uh, you know, people are pointing to maybe sh she'll end up walking away with that honor. But, you know, Caitlin Clark can't be counted out. And, uh, what she's been able to do to help her team turn around from being the worst in the league to now, like you said, uh, going on a nice win streak and, uh, winning the bulk of their last, you know, chunk of games. Uh, who knows what she's going to be able to accomplish the rest of the season. But I know Don Staley is already chiming in. We've got a lot of loud voices in the women's basketball world who are already talking about who's going to win rookie of the year. So, you know, it's nice to see this level of competition at this point in the season. People really gunning for these honors and awards and people actually caring and talking about it, which this is, this is the goal, right? This is what we wanted for the WNBA. And it seems to finally be coming to fruition. Yeah. I mean, we've been saying it from the beginning, Caitlin Clark has brought unprecedented, unprecedented attention to this sport and she's delivered. You know, I, there's, there was a lot of talk about, can she carry that success that she had in college into the pros? And so far the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, so she's been super fun to watch. I think she's made a lot of new fans for the WNBA and for women's basketball in general. So I just think it's cool that that's something that that we're actually talking about every week, that that this sport is relevant when for a couple decades, I there are most people probably couldn't even name a WNBA team. And now people are actually tuning in specifically to watch Caitlin Clark. So it's it's a really cool thing for the sport. Yeah, it is definitely cool to see. Uh, also, it was really nice to see Amber was over the weekend. We finally got a glimpse of Kate Middleton. I mean, she has stayed away from, you know, the public eye for such a long time because she's undergoing cancer treatment. We remember there was the photo. Uh, I think it was, it was around a holiday that she had posted, but people like were quick to point out like what's going on. And then, you know, after finally, you know, kind of taking the brunt of all of the criticism, she's like, listen, I'm undergoing cancer treatment. You know, I'm not being seen right now. I'm not being photographed. Uh, we've all felt for her, but to see her make an appearance at Wimbledon, it was really nice to see. And she looked fantastic. I mean, when does Kate Middleton not look fantastic? Right. But I mean, just the fact that she's undergoing cancer treatment and she's looking as good as she is. I mean, she is the epitome of grace. Absolutely. I mean, just 
I was, I was floored. She looks amazing. Obviously she always does, Incredible. but knowing what she's going through with, with her cancer treatments, that was, it was so cool to see her at Wimbledon. I know that she goes every year. She's a huge tennis fan. Um, she's also, she's also a patron for them. So she has the honor of awarding the trophies to the winners, um, at the final. So she did that this weekend, which was really cool. Uh, but yeah, it was great to see her. She looks, she looks amazing. And uh, I'm glad that she was she was able to make it. And we finally silenced those those conspiracy theories. You know, we talked about conspiracy theories earlier and there were some wild ones about Kate uh, at the beginning of the year. If you remember, she had uh, she had some sort of abdo- abdominal surgery and then nobody saw her for for weeks and weeks. Nobody heard yes. from her. Um, of course, now we found out it was because uh, they they found cancer and that she's been undergoing treatment, but they didn't announce that for a while. And so speculations ran wild on where was Kate Middleton. Um, and now we know where she is and uh, she looks to be she looks to be doing great, especially all things considered. Yeah, looks to be doing great. And also just the reception that she gets from the crowd. Um, she really is like a reincarnation of Princess Di, um, which she's constantly from the very beginning was getting those comparisons and um she's just such a classy woman so uh happy to see her doing well and i hope her the best in her cancer recovery of course uh, finally amber um a little humor uh, i know for months now we've talked about you know the sen kind of being a centerpiece of the paris olympics until it wasn't because unfortunately it was full of um well feces And uh, people have decided that it wasn't safe for them to get in. But actually, uh, a sports minister over the weekend decided to, you know, take a little dip. Didn't quite go as smoothly as they would have wanted. Uh, I think we have the video of that. If we can pop it up. Um, You know, there was um, just a little bit of a it was a little bit of a slip and slide, if you will. And um Good thing that they were covered in a wetsuit. They've got a uh, also swim cap on. Very little skin exposed, probably for the best. But um, definitely think it's best to keep your mouth far away from that water. But uh, kudos to this person for having the confidence, the courage, the bravery to get in. I don't know. I feel like they're probably going to have to shower for a straight week. Yeah, not the most great, graceful entrance, but anybody who's ever stood barefooted on a boat ramp uh, knows how slippery those things are. So we'll give her we'll give her a little bit of slack for that. But yeah, she drew I think she drew this the short straw because Ooh. I know that Macron was supposed to go swimming in there. The mayor of Paris was supposed to go swimming and then they just kind of bowed out gracefully and let let her do it. Um, but I still don't think it instills that much confidence because she's full wet to hair cap, whatever you call those things. So it's like, she's, she's doing her best not to touch the water with her skin. <laughs> so I'm still not yeah. entirely convinced that it's clean. You know, it's been illegal to swim in this, in the Seine for a hundred years because of all the pollution and the feces. There's been a massive poop protest as they're calling it, where Parisians who are upset about the Olympics being there and all the millions, I think it's close to a billion dollars they've spent now to try to get that river clean. They were, they were staging a protest. They were all going to go poop in the river right before the swim was scheduled. Um, And that could still happen. You know, we could see that that happen right before opening ceremonies. And if that does happen, I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm just, uh, I've never been happier to not be an Olympic swimmer. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good uh, watching from a very far distance. Um, I've been on a boat ride in the Seine. I can, I can very happily say I'm, I'm, I'm happy to just stick with that and let uh, those who, you know, have the desire to swim in the river to, to leave it to them. Uh, Amber, thank you so much for coming on. Always a pleasure. And I'm sure I will see you next week. Awesome. Thank you, Charlie. All right, everybody, uh, before we go, uh, the ESPYs took place over the weekend, and Serena Williams, obviously, being an amazing champion, was given a platform and the opportunity to speak and give a little bit of a uh, a speech. So uh, she did so, and while she said a lot of great things, she said one thing that kind of rubbed some people the wrong way, and for good reason. Listen. <laughs> So go ahead and enjoy women's sports like you would any other sports because they are sports. Except you, Harrison Butker. We don't need you. At all. Like ever. 
Um, well, obviously, Harrison Butker didn't take too well to saying everyone enjoy women's sports except for you, Harrison Butker. Uh, so he took to social media, Instagram specifically, and wrote this, uh, quote, at an event dedicated to celebrating a diverse group of men and women who have accomplished great feats. She used it as an opportunity to disinvite those with whom she disagrees with from, let's see, from, oh, from supporting fellow athletes. Okay, so, right, so obviously this kind of plain and simple. I think he said it perfectly. I don't think he needed to say anything more. Uh, yes, correct. This is an event that is supposed to celebrate diverse men, women who all are champions or of the likes in athletics. And she used it as an opportunity to instead do the opposite, to disinvite those who have different types of opinions as she does. And it, it's clear. I mean, I, I'm not going to go into it anymore. We've we've been talking about this for weeks now. Harrison Butker clearly uh, had a right to say the things that he did. He's allowed to think and feel however he wants. Specifically, he's allowed to air those publicly when he's talking to a group of students who very clearly share those same morals and values. Um, and he didn't say anything to attack Serena Williams. He didn't say anything to attack any other of his fellow athletes who feel any differently. He solely was speaking his mind and sharing what he feels to be important, and that should be allowed. And I think now will be allowed more than ever after, let's bring it full circle, we saw what happened to President Trump. Uh, I wish him nothing but the speediest of recoveries. Seems like he do, he's doing just fine. Uh, he's already landed in Milwaukee for the Republican National Convention. He got in last night on his private plane. And uh, I know he's going to kill it this week. I know he's going to make a tremendous speech on Thursday. Probably going to be certainly reworked after going through what is no doubt a life-changing moment, nearly losing his life on a public stage uh, in a near assassination attempt. So, Hats off to President Trump. Hats off to his team. Uh, we need to rearrange the Secret Service. Uh, the leader of the Secret Service needs to go. Clearly, she was a DEI hire who doesn't know how to do her job, nor did she want to do her job. Let's just be very clear about that. None of the Secret Service were there that day to do their jobs. Uh, but again, uh, kudos to the media who are properly covering this event which, of course, includes Outkick and Fox News. Happy to be a part of these two teams. Everybody, that's all we've got. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it has been a crazy past couple of days, that is for sure. Uh, but now we head, hopefully, in what will be a very positive direction with the RNC taking place this week. I couldn't think of better timing um, for all of this to occur. And also, we are looking forward to not only hearing President Trump speak, but also those who will be speaking on his behalf at the RNC, including... My boss, Dana White. So, uh, awesome. Can't wait to see it. Everybody, go have a great, fantastic day. Follow me on social media at Charlie on TV. And I want to say thank you to every single person who reached out saying happy birthday over the weekend. I was overwhelmed by the love, by the support, and it truly makes a girl feel good. So thank you so much. Everybody, thank you so much for being here, and I will see you tomorrow.